infection in people who have a tracheostomy tube is common. In patients who have a tracheostomy tube, up to 60% of them will develop pneumonia while hospitalized. There is a high susceptibility for infection in people with tracheostomy tubes due to the loss of function of the upper airway. Using a tracheostomy tube means that most of the air is inhaled and exhaled through the tracheostomy tube, which bypasses the upper airway. The upper airway warms and moistens inspired air. It also has many defense systems in place to capture and destroy microorganisms. At the level where the tracheostomy tube enters the trachea, there are fewer defense systems and those which are in place are often disrupted by the tracheostomy tube. For example, the ciliated mucosa may be damaged by the tracheostomy tube and its ability to sweep microorganisms up and out of the trachea is decreased. Additionally, air inhaled through the tracheostomy tube is often colder and drier than that which is inhaled through the nose and mouth. This causes airway secretions to thicken, which in turn may inhibit a person's ability to properly clear his airway of secretions. This can lead to infection. To prevent the airway from drying out, it is important to keep the airways moist. This can be done by either using active humidification, such as a heated humidifier, or a cool mist humidifier, or using passive humidification, such as a heat and moisture exchanger. Also, running saline through a nebulizer can keep the airways moist and can break up secretions. In some individuals with a tracheostomy tube, suctioning may be a great way to remove secretions from the airway. To reduce the possibility of infection, please use a closed suction catheter when possible. Other risk factors for infection include poor oral secretion management and aspiration. Saliva, food, and drink may drain into the lungs, which may lead to an infection. If a person is unable to swallow his saliva, please suction the oral cavity to prevent saliva from draining into the lungs. If aspiration is suspected, please ask a medical provider to order a swallow test. If the person does not pass the swallow test, a feeding tube may be needed. Some individuals with a tracheostomy tube have a cuff which may need to be inflated. An inflated cuff may increase a person's likelihood of developing an infection. If the person aspirates, the contents pool around the inflated cuff. If the cuff is not deflated frequently, the pooled contents can become a breeding ground for an infection. Additionally, an inflated cuff inhibits a person's ability to cough and clear secretions. In general, it is recommended the tracheostomy tube cuff should be deflated at least once a day to prevent infection and damage to the tracheal wall. For specific recommendations and guidelines about how often the tracheostomy tube cuff should be deflated, please ask your medical provider. One of the best ways to prevent infection is to wash your hands. Whether you are caring for someone else's tracheostomy tube or your own, please properly wash your hands with soap and water before touching the tracheostomy tube. For caregivers, please also wear gloves. For caregivers, if you are sick with any respiratory disturbance, please wear a mask when you are near someone with a tracheostomy tube. The stoma can easily become infected with bacteria from the skin. With the constant movement of the tracheostomy tube, bacteria on the skin can migrate into the respiratory tract. Please clean around the tracheostomy tube at least once a day. If the person has a lot of drainage from his tracheostomy tube, please place a drainage sponge around the tracheostomy tube. Change the drainage sponge several times a day if needed to keep the site dry. Respiratory equipment such as ventilator circuits and accessories should be washed at least once a week. If the items cannot be washed, they should be replaced. Please wipe off the ventilator once a day using disinfectant wipes. 
With some tracheostomy tubes, there is an inner cannula. If using a tracheostomy tube with an inner cannula, please change out the inner cannula at least once a day. An indwelling device such as a tracheostomy tube is often the perfect environment for bacteria to form a biofilm. Biofilms are extremely resistant to antibiotics and can cause chronic infections. According to the manufacturers of tracheostomy tubes, the tracheostomy tube should be changed once every 30 days. Some individuals, such as children, may need to change the tracheostomy tube more frequently than this. For specific details on how often to change the tracheostomy tube, please ask your medical provider. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.